Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, Clint, language, why do you want to assemble? culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. This is the Savage Nation. The phone number here is 1-800. No, it isn't. It's 855-400-SAVAGE. If you care to join the conversation of all the news of the day, news, views, and reviews, I am not going to talk about the shooting in Virginia. There's nothing more than I could say. Everyone's dealing with it. Guns, not guns, mentally ill, not mentally ill, drugs, no drugs. Everyone's going to have an axe to grind. Everyone's going to use this moron's insanity uh, for their own end. You know, the gun grabbers will say, take the guns. Uh, you know, but the real issue here, are, are the, the issues here are much deeper than that. It's affirmative action. It's uh, the whole issue of entitlement. And then when people are entitled to something that they're not entitled to, and they can't keep up with the people, then they blame everyone else. And there's a lot of issues that aren't even worth talking about because nothing's going to change. The... The philosophy of liberalism has so polluted the nation. It has so warped the nation that I don't know if we can ever come back from this. The question is, what are we going to talk about? Since I'm not going to talk about the Virginia shooting, I want to talk about mental illness and the homeless. Because I touched on the sickening sight of bums in San Francisco who are now so brazen that they are defecating in public in front of tourists, they're urinating in front of the people. They are aggressively panhandling. They're out of control in San Francisco, possibly in New York as well, possibly in Las Vegas, possibly in Seattle, San Diego, Washington, D.C., San Jose, Denver, Chicago. The homeless are brazen. They're out of control because the police have been told not to touch them. They are now the untouchables of America. And I touched on this yesterday, and I said, what's the solution? Solution to the so-called homeless problem. What are they? Well, they range all the way from reopen the mental hospitals and put the nuts in the mental hospitals because they can't be treated on the street, all the way to build everyone a million-dollar house. You know, I mean, the liberals will tell you you owe them a million-dollar home. This is how insane liberalism is. Now, New York City spends more than $1 billion a year on the so-called bum problem in 2014. $1 billion to take care of the bums. Los Angeles spent more than $100 million a year, with another $87 million a year spent on arrests, skid row patrols, mental health interventions. My hometown of San Francisco spent $167 million reported in 2014. It's actually much higher than that when you add in the police costs, the mental health interventions, the visits to the hospital, the ambulances. It's out of control. It's bankrupting cities. And so we have to talk about it with some degree of rationality and some, de some degree of compassion. And a friend of mine sent me a note about how yesterday's mentally ill are today's homeless. Hi, Michael. Just a short note about how the mentally ill are out on the street and not being cared for in a mental health facility as they used to be. All this came about from the, deinstitution the deinstitutionalization movement. Now, of course, that was started by John F. Kennedy. You may not know that. And in California, it was enacted by or passed by Governor Brown's father, Edmund P. Br Pat Brown. And then it was put into law by Ronald Reagan. The idea was that people were being warehoused in places like Napa State Hospital for years, and many of them should not have been there. Well, it wasn't just a crazy leftist idea. People on both the right and the left saw people in terrible condition getting poor care in these, in these uh, snake pits. It is now harder to put someone in a psychiatric facility. For someone who is seen as a threat to themselves or others, they can be hospitalized on a 72-hour hold. After that, if they are deemed to no longer be a danger, they are released. The problem here is that after they are medicated, they may improve just enough to be released after 72 hours. Then they relapse as soon as the meds wear off because they don't continue taking the medicine. At the same time as the movement to close the institutions was happening, there were all these promising new drugs which were cheaper than the cost of psychiatrists and therapy. And so there was the idea that there could be community health centers and drugs would be dispensed to these patients who could then be mainstreamed into their communities. 
However, there was no money in the budget for the community center. So patients got dumped out into the streets once the hospitals were closed. The bums were given pills and they were said, go on your own. But many don't take them. For example, Michael, a paranoid schizophrenic may take medicine and then at some point get the idea that someone has poisoned their medicine. They stop taking the medicine and become homeless. I wish I had an answer for this problem, but the cost of hospitalizing them for long periods of time would be astronomical. There are thousands of them just in San Francisco alone. Taxpayers wouldn't be happy paying for all of them in mental hospitals. Many of the chronically mentally ill are so far gone, they may never be employable. That comes to me from Irene. The phone number here is 855-407-282. Uh, I would invite you to call the show, but I'm having trouble once again with my call screening unit because my normal board operator is on vacation, and apparently uh, I'm not having the, the regular show uh, uh, that I normally would have. So you, you can wait to call because we have no calls right now. It's a call-in show known as a talk show with no talking except mine. Now, whether or not I'll get calls in the next three hours is a matter of it's in God's hands because I have no idea how to do this. So let's look at some of the other stories. For example, let's start with the song I asked to uh, open the show with, which didn't get played. That would be Scott McKenzie, San Francisco, come to San Francisco with a flower in your hair. And while we're playing the show opening, which should have opened five minutes ago, I'll ask you a leading question. Do you have homeless bum aggressive, aggression horror stories? Do you have horror stories from the streets of your city of what bums have done to you that have gone unreported? Homeless horror stories on the Savage Nation. As we go to the headlines from michaelsavage.com. Okay, Obama's brass were pressured to downplay the ISIS threat. You probably have all seen that by now. We all know that ISIS is on the move. We all know that ISIS is winning. We all know that the U.S. is doing nothing. And we all know that the military uh, is lying because Obama, the commander-in-chief, has told military and intelligence officials to lie about the state of ISIS. CNN instantly ends segment when pro-Trump Latina says uh, good things about Donald Trump. Since Obama took office, Dems have been decimated all across the country, but don't tell that to Obama. It might embar embarrass him. Anyway, you get the picture. 855-407-282. Let me play some sound for you where you see that Megyn Kelly, who is clearly the Benedict Arnold of Fox News, has now gone over to Punivision. Maybe she's looking to become the Punivision Woman of the Year. I don't know. But she now has the stooge from Punivision on Fox News, which has become low, lower than CNN in terms of where they've gone. And they join together in bashing Donald Trump in clip number two. Play it now. He, he clearly is not a fan of yours and of Univision's, but it appears to be mutual. Neither yours. So, in, right, so, well, so in, in his defense, why would he want to engage with you when you're, you know, you are on the record as, as calling him the most hateful, divisive figure running for president right now? Well, because what his words are dangerous and his ideas are extreme when it comes to immigration and when it comes to freedom of the press. I've, I've been a journalist for 30 years and I've never been ejected from any press conference anywhere in the world. That, those are ah, the things shut that up. you get, see. Get him off the show. You're not a journalist. You're a propagandist for the illegal alien hordes that have taken over America. Don't give me the crap about being a journalist. If you were such a great journalist, Mr. Ramos, you'd be opening your big mouth to the bosses of Mexico. But because you're afraid of the bosses of Mexico, you come here and you try to spit on our leaders. Go back where you came from with your puny vision cameras. That's all. I'm sick and tired of being bossed around by these 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 invaders. Period. End the story. That's the story. Puny vision. That's what I call them. Thousands of illegal alien children could be freed into the U.S. because Obama needs the future voters of America. Trump goes on television and says this isn't a gun problem. This is a mental problem. He's right. It's a result of using drugs. Another one on medication that's being covered up by Big Pharma. Obama rubs elbows with Harry Reid's corporate welfare lobbyists. Okay, should we go down? Female churchgoer attacked inside cathedral in latest knockout game incident. Two brave young black thugs came into a church while a 72-year-old white woman was looking at brochures in the church lobby, robbed her purse, and then one of them gave her a roundhouse punch to her head. Where's the racism here? Is it a hate crime? I doubt it. San Francisco bums crap in street like dogs. 
inquiry ways where the Pentagon's ISIS analysis was distorted to give more optimistic assessment. And if you think things are bad here, here's a little story for you from India. The job market in India is so bad that the government received 75,000 applications for 30 low-level jobs. It's 15 minutes after the hour. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Let's go to MichaelSavage.com again. Look at the main stories. Punivision stooge trounced by Trump. And I think we've got to jump from that to uh, Martha Washington, who's become Benedict Arnold's wife. We're going to rename Megyn Kelly uh, Megan Arnold rather than Megyn Kelly because it's clear to me that she is so desperate for attention. And she is so desperate because her bosses at Fox News want to trounce Trump. She is desperate to prove herself to be worse than you ever imagined. She is a bimbo. At the end of the day, you know, some pretty blondes are just bimbos. As smart as they may sound and as big as their numbers may be, listen, you can go to a, uh, a website, a YouTube website, you can see bigger numbers than Megyn Kelly has. And so just crossing legs and putting on lipstick doesn't make you a journalist. And frankly, I'm sick and tired of Fox News trouncing Donald Trump. They ought to be trouncing uh, uh, Punivision. They ought to be trouncing the gang members over here. They ought to be trouncing ISIS instead of trouncing Trump. But I don't want to talk about that. The fact of the matter is I have no callers right now, and this is a caller-driven show. And because I have fill-ins both on the board and in call screening, I don't think I will be able to continue on this show. I'm going to give it another few minutes, at which point we're going to have to go to a best of, because there is no backup in my studio. There's no callers, no call screening. And so, therefore, since this is a caller-based show, uh, there's very little I can do for you, my audience, in terms of communicating with you. This is not a talk show anymore. This is just one man twisting in the wind. And so, 855-400-7282 is the phone number. Questions for the Savage audience follow. The pollsters and the professional politicians don't seem to understand the rise of Donald Trump. Now, why do you suppose Trump is rising and the pollsters are falling? Question number two, do you think that Hillary will eventually be charged with any crime? Question number three, there is no question that race relations have taken a big drop under Obama. Do you think this can ever be fixed? Have you experienced the mental health system personally? What do you feel can be done to improve it? Here's another question for you. Is the media overlooking the racial motivation, hate crime situation in Virginia? What about the economic roller coaster that America was just put through? Is there someone behind it? Is it really China? How will the Jorge Ramos puny vision spat with Donald Trump affect the Hispanic community? Do you actually think Jorge Ramos is that popular? You think they're actually going to back Punivision? I think not. I think they'll back Trump. Why is Obama trying to fake what's happening with ISIS? Why is Obama so anxious to prove that ISIS is doing badly when they're doing so well? Will Democrats be able to recover their losses after an awful Obama presidency? I don't have an answer to these questions, uh, but I wish that I had some callers to discuss it with but apparently we do not have callers on the Savage Nation, and we won't. So we're going to give it another few minutes. We're going to keep trying. Maybe they'll get an engineer in there sometime today uh, if they can find one. And when they do, we'll get the callers back up on this talk show. Let's go to some of the websites. Fox News. Hillary under fire for terrorist attack. What does she mean by that? She compared Republican presidential candidates to terrorists for their views on women. Hillary Clinton is a mental case. She's a psychotic. First of all, she is probably has engaged in criminal activity and by attacking Republican candidates as terrorists for their views on women only shows how desperate she really is. She is in such bad shape that even a loser like Joe Biden is starting to look like a winner. By the way, there's a late poll out. It suggests that even Biden, that's right, even dopey Biden is a stronger candidate than Hillary Clinton. What else is on foxnews.com? Mystery revealed behind tombstones used for patio, not interested. Filth, porn, and toys. Virginia gunman lived in squalor, told to get 